Hey everyone, I welcome all of you to the exam preparation series for AZ104. So how are your exam preparations going on? I am sure that you are on top of it. In today's episode, my friends, I want to concentrate on one single topic that is Azure Virtual Machine and all the concepts related to Azure Virtual Machines. And do I need to remember you how important this concept is? It's not just for the AZ104 exam, it is also for the AZ900 exam and not just these exams, my friends. This concept is really important in case you really want to work on Microsoft Azure, be it as a fresher or as a Microsoft administrator. Azure Virtual Machine is one service that you will be using day in and day out. So loads of Microsoft concepts to be understood today. Microsoft documentation will be there so that you can read further ahead and also validate the answer. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. So today my friends, as I just said, we are going to concentrate on Azure Virtual Machine, but it really makes sense that we really understand what is Azure Virtual Machine before we actually dive into the questions. And of course, you can understand what is Azure Virtual Machine on this Microsoft documentation. But before I read this documentation, I would like to take you to the Tech Blackboard website. And here in the blog section, we have this blog written here, which is what is virtual machine. And this concept of virtual machine, my friends, comes under the category of infrastructure as a service, which is IAS. And you can watch the video here, which explains the virtual machine concept in a very neat and easy to understand manner. Here you can also read that the Azure Virtual Machine or Virtual Machine, it's a concept which is similar and same in all the cloud providers, be it Azure, AWS or GCP. So a Virtual Machine is basically a compute resource, usually called an image that behaves just like a real computer. And this Virtual Machine, my friends, uses software instead of physical computer to run programs and deploy apps. And then on the same block, you can also understand how the virtual machine works. I have explained all the different layers. So first of all, we have this server, we have host operating system. We also have hypervisor that enables running different kind of virtual machines on the same server. And also my friends, you can understand what are the different related concepts. For example, if you want to understand what is virtualization, you can understand that here as well. And in case you want to understand these subtopics in a little bit more detail, you can just click on them and you can understand these related concept but back to the virtual machine here you can also understand what are virtual machine used for so basically the use cases of the virtual machine so you can use virtual machine to build and deploy apps in the cloud you can also use them to try new operating system test dev scenario backup and disaster recovery and whole lot of other information is given on this blog article and not just that my friends this blog is designed so that you can understand the related concept whenever you're trying to understand one key concept so always you can read related blogs and explore more now let me jump to the microsoft documentation here you can read that the microsoft says that azure virtual machine are one of the several types of on-demand scalable computer resource that Azure offers. So typically you choose the virtual machine when you need more control over the computing environment than the other choices offer. So simply put my friends virtual machine is just like your laptop or your computing device but in the cloud infrastructure. So for example let's just say that your laptop is a Windows laptop and now you want to try out Linux or other operating system. The easiest way to do is go to the Azure portal, spin the Azure virtual machine with the Linux operating system and get your hands around the Linux operating system. And not just that, the best use case for virtual machine is lift and shift. So let's say that you have a custom application for your organization and you want to move this custom application to the cloud world. Then the easiest way for you to do this is spin a virtual machine in the Azure portal and then you can deploy this custom application to the virtual machine. And the best part is that once you're on the Azure portal or on the cloud, then you can look forward to customize this custom application. Maybe you move towards the PaaS, which is platform as a service or SaaS, which is software as a service. So virtual machine is a brilliant concept. You can use the virtual machine as the very first step to enter the cloud world. And now that you have a basic understanding of virtual machine, let's take the very first question for today. Question number 156, part 26. So the question is saying that you have a disk one which is attached to the virtual machine one. Now for some reason you want to attach this disk one to the virtual machine two which is the other virtual machine. Now the solution must minimize the downtime for both the virtual machine. Which four action should you perform in the sequence? And please note that to answer you have to move these options given here on the left hand side to this answer area on the right hand side. And one more catch is that all the steps should be in correct order. Now let's check out what are the options given. So firstly, we have start the virtual machine 2. 
Secondly, we have stop the virtual machine one and the option number third is start virtual machine one. Option four, detach disk one from virtual machine one. Option five is attach disk one to virtual machine two. And lastly, option six is stop virtual machine two. Now, before I reveal all the correct options in the correct order, I just want to make it clear that friends in this question, I have taken one assumption that both virtual machine one and virtual machine two are already in a running state. So in the question, it is nowhere mentioned that either of the virtual machine is already stopped. So that's why I'm taking this assumption that both the virtual machine are already in a running state. Now let's check out the first correct option. Here it comes. Stop the virtual machine one. As I just mentioned, I'm assuming that both the virtual machine are in a running state. So first of all, we have to stop the virtual machine one. Post that we will detach the disk one from the virtual machine one. And once we have detached the disk one, then what we need to do is, is start the virtual machine one. Now, in case you're already wondering why I'm starting this virtual machine one, hold your thoughts. I will come to this point in just a little while. But first, let's check out the last step. And that is attach the disk one to the virtual machine two. So these are the four steps in the correct order that we need to perform in order to move the disk one from the virtual machine one to virtual machine two. Now, let me come back to this point here that why I'm starting the virtual machine one. Now friends in the real practice, you can detach the disk one from the virtual machine one and then attach this disk one to the virtual machine two and probably then start the virtual machine one. But then in the question, as you can see that we want to minimize the downtime for both the virtual machine. So that's why I'm starting the virtual machine one right at the third step so that I can minimize the downtime for virtual machine one. So that was the reason why I'm starting virtual machine one at the third step. And actually there is a better concept or better way to do all this detachment of disk one from one virtual machine to another one. And that is called hot remove a data disk. And you can read all about how to detach a data disk from a Windows virtual machine on this Microsoft documentation. And here you can read all the steps that you need to perform in order to move this disk one from virtual machine one to virtual machine two. But besides this documentation here, I want to bring you to this documentation as well, where you can actually do a lab to understand how to attach or detach a data disk for a lab virtual machine in Azure Dev Test Lab. And also the concept that I was just telling you hot remove a data disk is also given here. And here you can read that you can hot remove a data disk using PowerShell, but make sure that nothing is actively using the disk before detaching a disk from a virtual machine. So actually in a practical life or when you are actually working with the virtual machine, this is a more reliable and a faster way. But when the question come in this state, then you have to perform all these steps in this correct order. Now let's move on to the question number 157. This says that a company plans to copy an on-premises virtual machine image to a container named my images. Now, which command should you run in order to create the container for the planned image? And here you can see this is the command. So it starts with the easy copy. Then you have to choose some options here. This is the second part of the command. You have to choose more options here. And this is where the command ends. So let's try to figure out what are the correct options to complete this command. It starts with the easy copy. What should be the next step? Well, the correct option out of these three options given here is the option make. Then we have your account name, which is a part of the command. And then out of these table image and blob, we have to choose the correct option and that is blob. So let me show you the correct command. Here it comes. Here you can see that we have easy copy. Then we have make, which is the option that we have chosen here. Then it's the account name. Here you can see that this part of the command followed by blob. Here you can see that blob file or DFS. And then we have this dot code dot windows dot net slash top level resource name. And what is this top level resource name? Well, in our case, it is this container, which is named as my images. And here is the documentation in case you want to go full length to understand easy copy command. The links to all the documentation, my friends, as always are given in the description box. Now let's move ahead and take a different question format. Question number 158. It says that you are evaluating the connectivity between the virtual machines after the planned implementation of Azure networking infrastructure. Now for each statement, these are the statements given here. You have to select yes if the statement is true. Otherwise, you have to select no. So here you can see that we have three statements given here and along the side corresponding to each statement, we have a possibility to do yes or no. So let's read the first statement here that says the virtual machines on the subnet one will be able to connect to the virtual machine on subnet three. And of course, this is a correct statement. That's why yes is the correct answer. Now we have the second statement that says the virtual machine on the client subnet 
will be able to connect to the internet and yes my friends this also is the correct statement that's why once again yes is the correct answer lastly we are given with the third statement that says the virtual machines on the subnet 3 and the subnet 4 will be able to connect to the internet yes or no and coincidentally this last statement is also correct that's why yes is the correct answer now friends these are the kind of question where microsoft can trick your mind you know maybe all the options are correct or maybe all the options are incorrect so that's why you really need to be thorough with all the concepts but let me give you some more information around this concept and connectivity to the internet so once my friends the vnet or the virtual networks are paired then all the resources on one vnet can communicate with the resources on other peered virtual network and not just that all the azure resources connected to a virtual network have outbound connectivity to the internet by default and therefore the virtual machines on the client subnet and the virtual machines on subnet 3 and subnet 4 can automatically connect to the internet so a really interesting question very close to the day-to-day -day activity that any azure admin will perform now with that let's jump on to the question number 159 that says that you plan to deploy three azure virtual machines named vm1 vm2 and vm3 now the virtual machines will host a web app which is named as app1 now you need to ensure that at least two virtual machines are available if a single azure data centers becomes unavailable sorry for this mistake here it should be r and not area now what should you deploy and the given options are option a each virtual machine in a separate availability zone option b each virtual machine in a separate availability set and then option c all virtual machines in a single availability set and option four all three virtual machines in a single availability zone and this question my friends is a deep question you really need to understand a lot of different concepts for example you have to understand what is availability zone you need to understand what is availability set and how these both concepts relate together only then actually you can answer this question but do not worry i will give you some documentation so that you can read through all these concepts and answer these kind of questions more accurately for now let me give you the correct answer and that is option c all virtual machines in a single availability set so first of all i have this documentation for you which is availability options for the azure virtual machine here you can understand what is azure availability zone availability zones expand the level of the control you have to maintain the availability of the application and data of your virtual machine and more information on azure availability zone is given in this link you can check out this link and understand all about the azure availability zones and besides availability zone one more concept you need to understand to answer these kind of questions accurately that is availability set now availability sets are logical grouping of virtual machines that reduce the chance of correlated failure bringing down the related virtual machines at the same time and of course you can really understand what are azure availability set on this documentation availability zone and please read all these concepts my friends availability zones availability sets azure regions these are really important concepts, not just from the exam perspective but also when you're actually working on microsoft azure i mean you really don't want to build any application which is not available it's your prime responsibility to build the application or ensure the application availability at any cost now let's move on to the next question question number 160 question is saying that you have an azure subscription that contains several hundred virtual machines now you need to identify which virtual machines are underutilized what should you use your options are azure advisor option b azure monitor and option c azure policies and these kind of questions my friends these are actual replication of the situations that you will be as an azure admin so as a Azure admin, when you have a lot of virtual machines, you really need to understand what are the virtual machines that are overutilized, that are underutilized. And this is super important to save the cost. And you should be super clear which tool to use when. So I've seen a lot of people really getting confused between all these tools, advisor, monitor, policies. But you don't have to worry. I will bring a lot of questions so that you are understanding all these concepts in a really crisp manner. But for now, let's check out the correct answer for this question. And that is option A, Azure Advisor. And here you can read that the Azure Advisor is a digital cloud assistant that helps you follow the best practices to optimize your Azure deployments. And what can you do with the Azure Advisor? Well, that is given here that you can get proactive, actionable and personalized best practices recommendation. And the Azure Advisor really helps you improve the performance, security and reliability of your resources as you identify the opportunities to reduce overall Azure spends. And this is how you can reach to the Azure Advisor. So first of all, you come to the Azure portal and then you can find Azure Advisor on this left hand side blade. In case you're not able to find here, you can always search the tool 
in this global search bar so here is the azure advisor just click on this and here you can see that the azure advisor is actually providing you lot of recommendations that are related to cost security reliability and and because this is my personal account i do not have any solution or application or lot of resources hanging in there that's why you do not see any recommendation but normally when you have a corporate solution or application running on azure virtual machines or any other azure service then you will see all the recommendation over here so this is one tool as an azure administrator you're going to use every day okay so friends in the closure of the video i just want to say in case there is some service or some microsoft concept that you're not able to understand or crack let me know in the comment section we can discuss this for them and we can solidify our positions for the az104 exam so please go ahead and ask your questions in the comment section i will surely try to answer but also as a bonus my friends there are a lot of exam takers that are watching these videos so your question most probably will be answered either by me or some of the other exam takers so there is nothing to lose ask your questions help the community and also solidify your position for the microsoft az104 and that's all for today i will see you in the next video till then stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching